No, it's a custom job. I've actually just borrowed the car from a friend. It's bloody well done. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it looks factory, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. Hi guys, Scott here from Outlaw Garage. We have something unique hitting the channel today. So here in Australia, we absolutely love a ute. Uh, the Malu is an icon here. Uh, but today we're blending it up, mixing it up with a little bit of Porsche. And today we have the Porsche 928 ute. Back with Alex, we've done a couple of your 356s. Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, right. At the shed, but it's a glorious sunny day today, and we are out with the Australian Porsche icon, the 928 Ute. So we're going to take a tour because I don't, I've got no idea how this ended up. So how did this journey begin? Okay, so I can't take any credit for it other than finding the car. Okay. Um, the idea came from my father, Stuart. Um, who has had a, actually one of the very early 928 owners here in Australia. I think he had the second 928 ever coming okay. into the country. Um, so he was an early adopter of the, of the 928. Um, and then about, it, would have, it must be close to now 20 years ago, uh, he, he started to think about, uh, like, oh, wouldn't it not be cool? And he drew it on the back of a napkin. So all these ideas coming from the back of a napkin. napkin. <laughs> uh, and then drew it out on the back of a napkin and said, I want to make a ute. So that then progressed to saying, right, well, now we need to find a car. And I happened to be then trawling through unique cars or whatever it was at that time of the day and um, and found a car up in, I think it was Malvern or South Yarra or somewhere around there in a used car dealership and ended up buying this car. Uh, it was a 1979 manual, Aussie delivered, had done a hundred and something thousand Ks and I ended up paying it about nine grand for the car back then. So. Uh, um, when and was, it was that? When was that again? Oh, look, it would have been. It was. It, it was would have been fifteen plus years yeah, ago. I think. Okay. Ago. So, so um, a bit of the unloved era. It was of still. A yeah, I, I was Porsche. driving. I, th I think probably at that time I was either had just disposed of or was still driving an eighty-one manual as my daily driver, which okay. I've done for many years, or probably three, four years, and then found this. It wasn't great. It was okay in the body. That the engine was okay, gearbox was a little bit notchy, but it was it was a driver. It was it was just a, a you know it was an okay car, and then we set about trying to build it. And so the build actually then came about with uh, engaging Peter Hart, who I think you might have spoken to before on your channel. But Peter has built the uh, he does a lot of three five six work. He actually did some work on your car, if you did might some... recall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't about that. I don't recall that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Peter said about trying to work out, okay, how do we actually make this work? And so I'll take you through maybe in a few moments of what sort of happened, but essentially we try to keep the wheelbase the same. So the wheelbase um, from front to rear wheel is exactly the same. Okay. And then in the back section, that's where it's been lengthened. So when you do a side profile shot of the car, you can see that the back is really what's longer. And that's where it's been extended by about 18 inches, which has enabled the fuel tank, the battery box and all that sort of stuff to stay intact. Yeah. And then it was the bit in the middle that sort of got lengthened. Um, and then it was a matter of trying to then work out where do you actually you know, roll the back over. The rear window is actually from a 914. Um, and then the rest of it was actually relatively easy. And so, yeah, the car then was finished. And so it was, a, it was probably, I can't remember, maybe it was sort of nine months or so of sort of building and getting it all right. Yeah. And then we used it. It was, we actually had it here and with a, with a Porsche function that we had not long after it was finished and had a few of the the porsche guys back then and they said wow this looks like it's from the factory um and yeah so then dad used it for a while always got lots of looks especially at bunnings when you rock up in a ute at bunnings and people, yep. people are around going wow i never knew they made them as a ute and then dad would sort of just wind them up and say, oh it's only one of the you know five ever made it was the only one in right hand drive and they were like oh wow of course it was all you know yeah, yeah, just yeah. a story but it, it always just added to the, the hilarious uh, you know, making it hilarious um and then it sort of, it sat in the shed for a while, it just wasn't being used. Um, and like anything, when it's not being used, then you know, things sort of start to go wrong. So yep. we got it back up and running again, then COVID sort of happened. And so it sat there again. Um, and then for Phillip Island last year for historics, I said, I should really pull it out because it'd be kind of fun to have it down at Phillip Island for the historics, yep. use it as the, you know, the, the drive car and throw the wheels and the fuel and everything in the back. And so, yeah, that sort of kind of, reignited sort of some excited excitement about it because yeah a lot of people hadn't really seen it to be honest so. yeah because we talked about it we and had philip island was the first time i actually saw, saw it. it that's right and um, i remember you put it on your video yeah, saying hey we yeah, gotta yeah. get to alex yeah, <laughs> th that will get on the channel at some point so uh 
let's take a little bit of a closer look at it I didn't realize it had been I guess looking at the side profile you can kind of tell it has been extended yeah so if you look on the right hand side of the gimp in the back you can sort of see it's that back section where it's bum is sort of a, it's got a big bum um, it's well it's yeah bum, so that <laughs> that small section <laughs> kind of there yeah so of course when you start to relieve the car of all the weight because what you've got in 928 you've got all this big glass that's back here yeah it's a massive chunk of glass, glass isn't on it? the back um even the tailgate way you know the, the the hatch weighs a lot so yep. you've removed a lot of weight out of the back end of the car so it's actually in nine to eight terms it's actually relatively light yeah um but everything else is all stock so i mean it's a 79 manual it's actually quite a rare car now actually um so and i guess keeping the wheelbase the same and a bit of an extension on the rear was probably made it a little bit easier for engineering afterwards Look, it, it wasn't too bad i mean at the end of the day we haven't really changed anything we haven't changed anything to do with uh gearbox or you know drive shafts or anything like that because no. that's all, it's only just a body modification there'd be no different to try and bolt some flare or flares on or yeah, yeah something yeah. like that so um, uh, it's the same color as it was originally um you know and in a moment we'll sort of open it up and show you some of the the, the, the bits and pieces of it but um yeah, you know, we extended the exhaust. That was pretty much, and, and some wiring to, um, you know, for where the brake lights To get to are. the, <laughs> to get to the tail lights, I guess. <laughs> Other than that, as I said, it, the only thing we had to do is extend the side, uh, um, what do you want to call these, rub strips. Yep. Um, so we end up buying an additional door one and then sliced it in. And then once that got painted, it's all done. But you would never know. <laughs> no, you would never know by looking at it. No, but it always, uh, it turns heads and uh, it's a bit of fun and it drives really well actually it's uh, um, I don't know if the engine's been warmed up at some point in time but it's having driven a number of V8s it's actually quite sprightly and um, makes the right noise hey it's it's an Aussie V8 ute so uh, <laughs> this just happens to be a Porsche <laughs> And it's functional because it's got the metal tray. So it's got the metal tray in there. Yeah. Um, I've even put lockdown points in here so you can actually lock things down. So you can, um, you know, if you're carrying anything, you can lock it down. Yeah. So it's got yeah. The, and then under here, this is sort of, you know, where anyone that's seen a 928, this is your 928, you've got your spare wheel, you've got your battery under here, um, that's your fuel tank. So all of that stayed in, uh, intact. Be a bottle cap from when we used as a, as a uh, <laughs> it was an esky back it, at uh, Phil Island. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. was full of beer <laughs> and ice, so it was the world's biggest esky at uh, for the drinks for Group S Racing. So, uh, <laughs> which everyone Sorry. loved, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. I, I bet they did. So, um, so yeah, look, it's, it's really quite functional. Um, so, of course, we put the, the beam in like you would have in any any Ute, um, and it just away it goes and pop straight on. <laughs> It's very, very simple, and it's, it's very functional. Yeah, functional. So it's not like there's planks of wood um, in the back and she looks pretty. She's actually used. It's very, very functional. So Yeah. So there's the engine, we've opened it up. It, had, it looks spotless. We've had a few V8s on the channel just recently and this is another great one. So you just think it might have had a little bit of a tune or? I don't know, it just seems it to could just spin. be the lightness. It's just, it, it actually feels it spins out a bit quicker. So whether or not that's actually from the engine or whether it's you know, weight, but even just sitting there, it feels quite sprightly. So I don't know, maybe the other ones I had were quite lethargic, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. this actually feels you know, quite good. But uh, as I said, original Aussie car, which is nice, um, and you know, all real original. Like we had the original sound deading that was starting to disappear under here, so that all flaked off. But you can see the glue that we yeah. got rid of it all. But it's all very original, the car, which is kind of nice about it too. Yeah. So. As we were talking about it being functional, it does have a tow bar on it right there. Uh, historic plates. We were talking about that. Yep. It used to have. <laughs> Well, funnily enough, you know, you go into Vic Roads, you try and find your number plate, and you're thinking, oh, what shall I get? Well, this was pretty easy, Ute 928. And funnily enough, it was available, <laughs> so who would have thought? Um, and so, yeah, for its first part of its life before we had historic registration here in Australia, or in Victoria, I should say, uh, yeah, it was rocking the plates, uh, Ute 928. We've still got them, 
no one's come out of the woodwork to try and buy them from me. Yeah. Um, but clearly, yeah, the, if, it would be nice if you could run historic rego on personalised plates or normal plates, but um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, we were talking I'm, about that earlier. There is an opportunity for th there's Vic an opportunity. Roads, you know, give us historic custom plates. And they'd probably be able to charge a fortune for Yeah, it. we're happy to pay. <laughs> pay we're for happy itself. to pay for those. So yeah, so look, the tow bar's cool in so much as that it, it's there. But because of the bicycle rear end in the 928, you can't actually put a lot of nose weight on it. So you can travel a little trailer around, but you can't actually tow like a boat behind it. Not yeah, that you yeah. want to anyway. Um, but it would be a cool staging shot to sort of have the ute and you know, race car or like your car on a trailer behind it or something. It'd be uh, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd yeah. Make for a good photo shoot anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, I wonder if uh, next time we see it out somewhere and somebody's got a trailer, we might might do that. that up. Yeah. Well, I've got a three five six checker plate trailer, so we might even do that one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. When we've got more time, we'll do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Now the distance between the clutch and the brake is miles, so you'll go straight oh. in between. You'll feel that. Because I was going, that accelerator feels strange, yeah, so but that's actually that's, the brake. That's the brake. <laughs> so now look where. The so if you look down there, you can see where the clutch is. Yeah. You can see that. Okay, there's a big gap in between, but you can't. It's perfect for hill towing, so you can still hill tow it. But that's the brake there. All right. So we're away, and hopefully we won't make a fool of ourselves. We're in first. We should just be able to. It's not along very nicely at first. Here we go, we're off. I have to confess, this is my first time driving a 928. So I am kind of feeling my way around this a little bit. I think I might be in fourth. So let's see if we can get into third. There we go, we're in third. I think this might be as well my first time driving a car with a dog leg shifter as well. So there's a few firsts today. Uh, a lot of the 928s we've had on the channel, in fact I think all the 928s we've had on the channel have all been um, auto cars. So it is a little bit different having uh, manual on the channel and definitely driving a manual is a little bit different with that dog leg all right so the nerves are kind of settled a little bit now we nearly had a bit of a disaster on the gate because i pulled up a little bit too close but we sorted that out i've got first second third and fourth sorted out so i'm feeling pretty comfortable with that the the car's got a little bit of a rumble about it alex was saying that it had oh, it's getting a little warm in here it had um uh, got a little bit of a perhaps tune on the engine or some modifications done but um, it does have a nice rumble I always forget the handbrakes down that right hand side as well and comparing it to the other 928s it does definitely have um, a bit more of a, a rumble about it the car definitely feels like it's moving so I don't know if that's just because of the the weight in the back has been got rid of, but um, it does seem like it's got a bit of talk about it. That looks amazing. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Do it yourself. Nice, a custom job. I've actually just borrowed the car from a friend. It's bloody well done. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it looks factory, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, great, great job. It's not what you expect. No, and just looks right. It does, but it's, if someone said to me, cut that off and it'll look like that, I would have done that. Yeah, 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 it's great. Right. Thank you. So we've had torrential rain here in Melbourne for, I don't know, it's been a couple of days now. We've had floods, uh, which has uh, impacted a lot of the community just kind of outside of Melbourne. Today, though, is a glorious day, and I'm kind of hoping everybody's starting to dry out a little bit because um, uh, today's definitely a warm day, and that should help a lot of people out. I could imagine going on a long trip with this. Back filled up, behind the back seat because the rear seats have been removed. There's plenty of space there as well. So um, put some bags in the back if you're out camping or if you're at a ute muster, uh, you can throw your stuff in the car, lock it up and go out for the day. This is, um, uh, this is awesome. It does get some looks as well. Melbourne roads are not the best, they're speed bumps and there's potholes everywhere. This road has got a few of those about it. Uh, you don't feel it jarring or you don't feel like the car 
um, is out of proportion or lost any of its comfort because the 928 is a GT car comfort long trips and with this modification you don't actually feel like the car has lost any of that at all how's that runs really sweetly that's only second gear we are in a 40 zone but we're coming up to a 60 so we should be able to slide it up the gears a little bit more that is third in fact that is not third that is second so second third there we go so i'm kind of hoping by the end of this i am a dog leg expert but that's taken a little bit of getting used to i have going uphill here and it has got plenty of torque it does genuinely feel like it could pull for days I'm actually really quite surprised. And I probably shouldn't be because we've been in a few 928s and they've scooted along very nicely and even from traffic lights you've been able to get a little bit of a squeal from them. And this, definitely third, feels like it can really rev out. And because the length of the car in the back has only been lengthened by that 18 inches, you don't really feel that in the rear. It doesn't feel like it's got a big tail on it or anything like that it handles really well and I guess that is because the wheelbase hasn't been lengthened the wheelbase hasn't been messed around with at all um, I'm suspecting the suspension is exactly the same so other than that little bit hanging off the rear the handling is, is the same as a standard 928 well, here we go Whoa. we do appear to have a hold of Malou behind us which is currently thinking what the hell is that you so the question was what I thought <laughs> now most of this is my problem so first time driving a 928 okay uh, and probably a 928 manual as well makes it yeah because the pedal thing is a little bit different I think yep. uh, the dog leg yep. I, uh, I think that's a little bit unusual for me perhaps with the shifter and the clutch and the, but once you get going once you're in second third it's uh, easy it's actually yeah, a yeah, really yeah. easy game, yeah right? yeah that was easy yeah. what you don't it still has that i said in the car it still has that gt feel because i don't because you haven't changed the wheelbase yep. it still has the same feel suspension yep. it do, it's not lost anything not at all at all no so that that was and not that i was kind of expecting it because it's only been extended a little bit on the rear yep. but i don't know if i expected it to feel a bit different and you don't you don't feel it in the car you don't feel the you feel that having driven the equivalent car that was a, a um uh, without all the bits removed yeah you do feel it's a little bit lighter but it's like you got to be feeling for it you got to actually know yeah, yeah. Uh, and because yeah. uh, i've been in a couple of 928s recently i could definitely feel it was lighter yeah without a shadow of a doubt it it, it felt reasonably significantly lighter mm. uh, i kind of thought with with some recently yep uh it has a bit of a rumble doesn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and Good. i didn't obviously didn't try it on the road because it's 40 60 and 80 so we were being sensible well done um well that's what he says on the video yeah <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you'll see that in the, GoPro. <laughs> the difference between the manual and the auto is definitely i think the the manual does feel more gt yeah. orientated you can yeah. definitely feel that difference in the oh, car yep. but the weight um the i thought the weight was a massive difference but I imagine when you're in fifth is it an, is it more of an overdrive because you, you could drive that and probably use hardly any fuel in fifth oh yeah exactly and well, it just goes forever ryan just took that so my brother-in-law took that to the daniloquin ute muster just a few weeks ago so he drove all the way up there all the way back 350 odd k's i think it was each way um, and he said it was quite economical he says it sits on you know i can't remember now was it just under 2000 revs at uh, 100 kilometers an hour and it's just sort of yeah. you know loping along um so it's actually not too bad it's when you do open the taps up that starts to use a bit of fuel but it's actually not too bad when you're just cruising on the freeway yeah so. i could kind of feel that oh, yeah. we didn't really kind of get into fourth round here because yeah. third is just still 2000 revs it kind of poodles along nicely yeah. it's easy but you could tell if you're in third and then you go fourth and then you go fifth 
like it's quite long. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's geared yeah, to yeah, do yeah. two hundred and what two hundred and sixty kilometre hour car back in the day. So I mean, it's geared to be uh, um, to have long legs, and that's what they were built for. And it's only when you actually get nine to eights up to sort of that sort of speed, you go, oh, I kind of get it now. And certainly in this country, because they're all you know, governed to one hundred kilometres an hour on the road speeds. You don't really get the car doesn't actually really come alive until yeah. it actually hits probably 140 150 160 and say so, oh now i get it and that's what it was built for in germany or in europe is for uh, for barnstorming and yeah. uh, that's exactly what it was and it was built in 77 or you know <laughs> so it's, it's quite fascinating well there we go we've had a porsche ute on the channel absolutely fantastic thank you alex for uh letting us take this for a spin uh I think we need to get a little bit uh, better with that dog leg shifter, but we absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. So, the perfect Australian car, the Porsche Ute. Please give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you later. See you guys, bye.